Well, to understand crush margins, we first need to fundamentally understand the components of soybeans. Now, when you crush beans, you get about 79% meal, 19% oil. So on a volume basis, you produce about four times as much meal as you do oil post-crush. So historically, the value has been borne by the meal side. Over a long-term basis, meal accounts for about two-thirds of the value for soybean crushing, and oil's about one-third. But in the last two years, we've seen an absolute fundamental paradigm shift in that, where the market has realized increasingly the value of soybean oil, its diversity, its applications, not just in traditional food uses and industrial, but in uh, emerging biofuel space as well. So we're now at a position where that traditional 33, one third per, uh, share for soybean oil is now a lot closer to parity, uh, closer to 45 to 48%. So we're seeing uh, rather than meal carrying the most of the weight as it has in the past, both products kind of on equal footing in terms of value contribution uh, to soybean crushers. Well, first, I think to, to understand all the nuances of the question, we need to look at the California market. And the California market in recent years has established targets for decarbonization. Right now, the target is to decarbonize the California economy by 20% by the end of the decade, by 2030. And one of the pathways that California is looking to achieve its decarbonization targets is through uh, increased use of cleaner burning fuels throughout the whole life cycle. And one of those is renewable diesel. Renewable diesel is a drop-in fuel that is uh, chemically equivalent to uh, petroleum diesel, except that because you're producing it from uh, plant-based sources, including soybean oil, uh, the emissions over the life cycle of producing it are significantly less than with uh, traditional uh, petroleum-based diesel. So California's established a credit system that allows blenders and refiners to uh, receive a credit for utilizing bio-based feedstocks in production of renewable diesel. So it's uh, led to uh, increased forward-looking demand, uh, both in the market of California for renewable diesel, but I think more importantly, it's also led to waves of private sector investment uh, to increase crushing capacity in the United States to increase the volume of soybean oil that you have available for all its diversified applications. And that's a critical de-bottlenecking that has to happen uh, between bringing the soybeans off the field, of course, that our farmers are planting and cultivating year after year, uh, to actually you know, start to place it into that end market, and not just in the energy market, but of course in the food and other industrial spaces as well. You know, it's really hard to say, right? In any commodity market, uh, you have trends where prices are going up and prices are going down, and they're never driven by one bespoke factor. Uh, if we look at oil prices on the whole and go back a couple months, you know, when we had the Russian invasion of Ukraine, that led to a significant spike in vegetable oil crosses and commodity prices really across the board because you had loss of availability out of a key production corridor. You had higher fertilizer prices. This is, of course, against the backdrop of production disruptions that we had in many different oilseed uh, crop producing countries around the world. So, you know, as far, it's hard to say what the margins will do in the future because there's such a confluence of factors. But overall, we've seen prices come down over the past couple months relative to the uh, immediate post-war spikes. So lots to see in the months and years to come. Uh, well, right now, we're fortunate that we've got our harvest you know, basically completed. In the U.S., we produced a crop of over 118 million metric tons. That's our fourth largest on record. Uh, and I bring this up because, one, we had drought pressure across the country, overcame that, produced a very large crop. And, you know, for us to assess how much soybean oil we'll have available, it all starts with what happens in the ground in the fields. And, you know, I think this year was absolutely a success in the face of some weather-borne headwinds. So we've got the crop there. Uh, crushing capacity uh, is, is, or crushing utilization is running at a high capacity rate. We're seeing crushers extracting more and more oil out of each bushel they produce. Uh, relative to a couple of years ago, we're up maybe three to four percent on oil extraction rates. So as we're you know, waiting for this incremental crush capacity to come online, 
uh, existing crushing facilities are working as hard as they can to extract more oil to continue to meet this burgeoning demand that we have from a number of different sectors. So in short, uh, in the nearby, I don't have uh, concerns about it. We've had a good crop, we've got good run rates, and we're poised for additional expansion in the future.